The NFL season's almost over, but it feels as if the 2022 NFL Draft was just yesterday. Today, we're going to reflect on rookies who have impressed this season in spite of where they were taken. What's crack a -lack? It's your boy, Bro Schmo, just in case you did not know. So go ahead, become a bro and subscribe. Leave this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Let's have that nice, beautiful football discourse because I'm only listing 10 guys and I'm sure there are going to be names that come to mind for y'all and I want to hear about them in the comment section below. And this is specifically guys that I was surprised with their performance this season in spite of maybe where they went or where I had them on my draft board. Without further ado, let's go ahead. We're going to get into it with Brock Purdy, man. He is arguably probably thus far the best quarterback uh, to come out of this class. I mean, hey, Kenny Pickett, man, he, I think he shows his flashes. But Brock Purdy has done an exceptional job coming in relief of... Uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy G who got hurt in the Miami game and since then he's been 3-0 and as a starter and that's not included in the game he won against uh, my Miami Dolphins he's thrown eight TDs to three picks and he's he's done a good job of staying within the offense not not necessarily being too risque with the football and just letting his playmakers do work the, the, the defense, you got a top five defense, man. So it's like, yeah, he's coming into a very good situation, but still coming in and being able to manage that is just top notch. I really like this guy back at Iowa State. His first two years were pretty impressive, but you, you were like, you know, what? he's got a bit of a noodle for an arm, but he is very decisive. He's a very uh, accurate passer. And then those final two seasons at Iowa State just were kind of wishy-washy. That's why he probably... I thought he was going to end up being a priority UDFA. He manage, manages to be Mr. Irrelevant, and then here he is, more relevant than ever, man. He has put out a really good season. Next on the list, Tyreek Wolin from the Seattle Seahawks. Now, I was pretty high on him when he initially uh when he ended up going like 153 that that was what i was like oh man i thought this guy was a day two pick i thought he would be a project corner though because while like his athletic like his speed and his size was very imposing still it's like uh, i could see this guy maybe getting getting uh put in a blender against more shifty wide receivers and that's been the case sometimes this year but this dude's constantly coming up with plays on the football. Six pass breakups, seven interceptions. If you're going to tell me he's got 13 pass breakups, that's because the NFL includes an interception as a pass breakup as well. I do not. But no, he's had a wonderful year. I didn't think he was going to come in day one and be ready to start. I thought he could develop into a very good corner league. I didn't expect this, especially in year one. And he started out right from the get-go in that uh, Denver game. He's been a starter every game this season it's been wonderful 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 for him and watch watch out man utsa they're producing prospects they, may, they might not be you know all day tours but uh they they got they might have some legit prospects through the line this year and next uh next year oh excuse me I'm getting all choked up uh, anywho, on to the next here in Braxton Jones, the uh, offensive tackle for the Chicago Bears. A guy, another guy I didn't expect to see starting time immediately. I had him as a developmental tackle in the league, and I could see why teams really, really liked him. You looked at his size. Oh, it's good size, 6'5", 310, but 36 inch arms. Like, oh, mama mia. I mean, granted, coming from. Uh, what was it, South Utah, like or Southern Utah? Like he, he, it's not like he faced the best level of competition. And when he did face like top level competition, like I remember a game against Arizona State, I was like, ah, yeah, man, I don't think this guy would be a ready to start from day one. But sure and behold, he has been a starter since day one, allowing 37 pressures and six sacks on almost. 500 passing snaps uh he has been flagged for nine penalties but still when you consider well, him being a rookie typically rookie offensive linemen have a rough first season maybe they start to get it together down the stretch of the year one or you'll start to see it in year two and i think that's kind of been the case man he's been really good the last what four five six games for the chicago bears and i initially had him as an early day three pick he ends up going at uh pick 168 and 
I'm just gonna say I'm shocked. I think they, they probably got a good building block, uh, a good cornerstone there in the uh, fifth round. Next up here we have is Jack Jones. And this is kind of the opposite of the previous uh, two prospects I had who I were higher. I was higher on them despite where they ended up going. Jack Jones was a guy that I wasn't high on whatsoever. I had him as a late day three pick. He ends up going to pick 121. And holy moly, like he has had a year. Like he, he's a guy that's going to end, end up being a starting corner for this squad for at least the next three more seasons until, uh, well, the Patriots have to sign him to a big deal, which he, uh, the Patriots probably won't even offer him that because they don't pay their corners necessarily. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I digress. Uh, I mean, we can also talk about Marcus Jones here, who has also had oh, an amazing season. He's He's got a punt return for a touchdown. He's got a uh, reception for a touchdown. Just needs to add a uh, – I don't think he has a pick six this year. But uh, don't have him on the list. I do want to mention him. But Jack Jones – is a guy right now he's been splitting time on the outside with Jalen Mills, which is kind of like, ugh, come on, Jalen Mills, get him out of here. You know the future. It's freaking Jack Jones. I think he what he opened it up his first start of the year came against Aaron Rodgers, right? Where he had the pick six. Freaking phenomenal. All right. Next we got Rashid Shahid. The receiver out of New Orleans coming from Weber State. And fun fact, I didn't watch this guy at all last year. Uh, there's only so many prospects I could get to, and he happened not to be one of them. And I remember, uh, what was it? I guess it was, yeah, week seven where he had the uh, the big, the long reception for a tutty. And I was like, oh, man, this is cool. This is a guy I didn't look at in the draft at all. And he's actually started the last three games for the Saints, and he's been relatively pretty solid in those games. What he has 11 receptions for almost three 200 yards for over 200 yards. He's got a tutty, so not bad. I mean, considering that they also brought in Chris Olave, who guess what? He's pretty darn good. And I mean, Shahid, at the very least, you're getting a very good return man and a guy who could come on the field to stretch. Uh, that can stretch the field vertically or you can do fun stuff with like uh, jet sweeps and whatnot so like this was a real good gold mine by the saints and just uh shows like how deep that their scouting department's willing to go to find some of these gems that won't get drafted so good on them for that man good on them for that next we got deron bland out of fresno state he has been the uh, slot corner for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's been very good. And as you can see, another guy that I was exceptionally lower on than where he ended up going. And the Cowboys, they kind of had this thing where they draft corners higher uh, than I have them on my board. You can look at Kelvin uh, Joseph, uh, Noshawn Wright, and to be fair, I think I'm right about those guys. However, Bland, he de he definitely looks like he's going to end up working out well. Already five picks on this season. Wasn't initially the starter as uh, Jordan Lewis, I think, went down to um injury in week two and well he no he got banged up i don't i believe he didn't end up going down until like week seven or week eight actually when when was all right all right all right here we go bland's first start was actually in week 10 but he did see significant time in week eight where lewis went down and really he's been the starter ever since he's been very good in the slot you're gonna end up giving up a lot of yards like his uh catch rate allowed is close to 75 percent which it's like uh you know you like to get that around like 65 70 because in the slot i mean there's just gonna be some times where you can't do anything about it you're gonna be just trying to cause minimal gains but he has been he's shown off ball skills again five picks two pass breakups he's been very solid there for the cowboys and definitely probably their slot corner moving forward next on the list we got my my, my dolphins cater Ho who there we go pins up baby i was getting nervous when i look at last names that i know i'm gonna have difficult uh difficulties pronouncing but kohu man has been really really good for the dolphins he didn't really get his um start in the slot until what week three and that was because nick needham he was splitting time between the outside 
and uh, the inside. And then, uh, like, Kohu has just been very good for the Dolphins. I mean, yeah, he's allowed 600 yards. But, again, in the slot, you're going to end up giving up a lot of yards. Uh, I think this past week against the Packers, he actually had to play a little bit on the outside, uh, which he's done that bits and pieces throughout uh, the season here. But, it's been very productive. He has a pick, six pass breakups, and just, I mean, coming from Texas A&M, commerce. Like, he he did go to the Hula Bowl, so, like, he was on the all-star circuit track, but still another good find by the scouting units that are able to go deeper than a guy like me who is basically doing this all by himself. Wish I had a team. It is what it is, though. But, hey, it's nice to see my Dolphins get in some good plunder from the draft, even though he was a UDFA. All right, on to Damari Mathis out of Denver, uh, drafted out of Pittsburgh, playing for the Broncos. I was a little lower than where he ended up going, but not much, so that's kind of inconsequential. Uh, I had him at 157. He goes at 115, so it kind of is what it is, but... He kind of got thrusted into uh, more of a star role in week two when Patrick Sertan went down to injury. And then he got thrusted back into the star because it was only for a game that Sertan returned. And then he got thrusted actually full time into the star position because of the injury to Ronald Darby. And he has been very good for the Broncos. He really has, allowing only a 70% uh, catch rate, six pass breakups. He's only allowed two tutties on the year. He has done a very good, very good job at sharing up the other side across from Patrick Peterson. Is he a guy maybe you want to move with long term in terms of um, being the starter across from Peterson? I think you could always bring in more talent. I'm never opposed to that. And I think teams should do that. But so far, it looks like they really have gotten themselves a really good gem in the fourth round there. And then on to Rodney Thomas II out of Yale. Drafted by, well, drafted by the Colts at pick 240. Another guy that I just didn't get to. Uh, he's had a really good season. Kenny Moore went down early on. And now they've been using the, they've, basically put Julian Blackman really in the slot a ton this year, which means they needed a deep safety to step up, and that safety ended up being Ronnie Thomas II. And he has done a very good job, especially the last three weeks where he has kind of been listed as a starter because um, typically you'll have Julian Blackman start the game, but they, they quickly go to nickel packages because it's the NFL. Every team's running. They're basically, their base formation are nickel packages. But he's seen a ton of snaps this year, over 600. He's got three interceptions, a pass breakup. Uh, he has a, He's allowed a really low catch rate when targeted deep. And he's been a good part of why this Colts defense has been solid in spite of their offense being unable to move the ball whatsoever. And I think the defense has got a lot of promise to it moving forward, man. They just need to get, uh, they, they need to get a quarterback. They need to get, they need to get an offense that can give their defense a break. But looks like they did a good job here drafting him. Another guy again didn't have an eye on, but still, like uh, the dude moves pretty darn well, 6'2", 200 pounds. So like things are looking bright for the future. Final guy I have on the list here is Isaiah Pachenko, out of Rutgers, getting drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs at pick 252. I had him at 240. I didn't expect him to really push for significant playing time there in Kansas City with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Uh, they have Jarek McKinnon, and they even brought in Ronald um, Ronald Jones, who I thought was going to see more time. But no, Pajanko's kind of taken over the starter role here. He really has. And despite the three fumbles, like, He's been really good. Over 700 yards rushing, another over 100 uh, receiving. He's been their, basically their star uh, kick returner with uh, over almost 600 yards. And, I mean, because they've tried to put Sky Moore there, but speaking of fumbles, man, he keeps on fumbling the ball. I really like Sky Moore, man. I'm gonna, I'm, next week I'm going to be doing a list of rookies that have had the most disappointed rookie seasons to me. And 
I imagine he might be on that list. But uh, uh, Pachenko was a bit of an older guy. I think he was going to be 24 when he was drafted. And it was basically he was built built well, 5'10", or 216. But he ran exceptionally fast. He looked good at the combine. Like, he was looking jacked, meaty, and it was like, okay, okay, maybe we got something here. Maybe we do. And sure enough, man, look at him. He's basically taking over the role. He is he is a prime example of why you probably shouldn't draft running backs in the first round, Clyde Edwards. Hilaire, who, to be fair, Hilaire's dealt with injuries for bulk of his career, but also he has been ineffective at spurts. But it looks like Pachenko is a guy that they will love. They're gonna love moving forward with. And I want to look exactly to what his rookie year, or not rookie year, but his um final year at Rutgers looked like. Uh, because he was a guy that was got on my radar late. Uh, I think it wasn't until was he in the Shrine? I think he was in the Shrine. I can't remember. Off the top of my head, uh, but I want to I want to see what his 2021 looked like. All right, so I mean it wasn't even that spectacular, like only 654 yards. He averaged 3.9 yards per carry, uh, only 12 forced missed tackles, and I, I get it. Rutgers is not like they have prime, uh, prime uh, NFL talent around him. Uh, but he, for the most part, man, he ran for over 500 yards every year there at Rutgers. So there, there is that. But I mean, he didn't really show much um, force miss tackle tackle ability. It was really you saw that straight line speed. So like, it ends up being a good get and a guy that probably going to move forward with uh, as their new. Not necessarily star running back, but a guy that's going to be the head of the running back committee there in KC. But who are some of the guys you think had very impressive rookie seasons in spite of where they went in the draft? Let me know in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead, do the YouTube thing. And as always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.